Well, hey, Alex, John Jay, thanks for uh, joining me. And I'm with uh, my uh, my teammates here today, uh, Ray and Moko. And I think, uh, I don't know if Jim's on, I can't see that, I can't read everybody that fast. So, hey, Jim, if you're out there. Um, anyways, um, Ray had suggested we do something and he invited some people to the call to talk about easements and we'll get into that. But I just wanna share with you a, a call I was just on with a gentleman and one of my clients in uh, Colombia, and, in, and he's in Colombia now. And he had the need to set up a, a company in Ireland. Uh, and so we did that a few years ago um, and it worked out fine. But uh, oh, people want to discuss, you know, these strategies I explain. I'm not talking about easements in Colombia. I'm talking about easements in the States. But what I'm going to tell you is, so we're, he and I are discussing um, using a joint stock company, a local joint stock company for his real estate investment. And he's talking about using the version of a limited liability company in Columbia for real estate investment. And so we were discussing the usefulness of each of those things. And we got into the conversation and he started describing to me how he's in a community and they're doing these certain things. And it's a really kind of a closed little bubble of a community. Apparently there must be thousands of people in the community. Maybe it's hundreds. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's over a thousand, something like that. And he was getting, the questions were about moving money around and, not having tax liabilities. And I said, look, you got the, you have a whole economy there. You have a micro economy, like a little bubble that doesn't rely on the government. It's its own governing body. In fact, it is a homeowners association because everybody who lives there, that's his home, <laughs> you know, whatever that looks like, it's his home. And so by virtue of the fact that you should have that in common, it's an association and it's private, but, but also it's not just that there's a homeowners association. You can do whatever you want. Because he described how people are doing things, getting things done, like building houses and setting up a church and trading money and whatever they're doing to run the community, they're doing it through different like technology, like PayPal and Venmo, right? As you know, all that all those companies report on you, right? But they're not reporting on each other. They're just friends and neighbors. They're not trying to create, you know, sort of the government system. So I suggested to him that because it's a whole economy, just find a nice convenient way that everybody can agree on. If you wanna kind of have some uniformity in the way you're trading with each other, just make it convenient. Now you don't have to create an entity is what I told them. I said, this is a better situation than needing an entity. You actually have people in your community that fulfill most of their needs by staying in that community. So you can do whatever you want. You're your own government. You can resolve your own problems. You can deal with your own money, pay each other. You're outside the tax system and guess what? It's legal to do that. Why? Because it was legal to set up the government, wasn't it? Who set up the government? You and me? We are the government. Well, we don't need that agency anymore. We don't have to report to it. We can set up our own. I gave him the analogy. I said, imagine if your community, you had a community of let's say 125 people that were crazy enough but have the technology and the willingness to go live on Mars. Crazy, crazy example, okay? What are they gonna do if they have disputes or they're dealing with money? You think the tax system, they care about the tax system on Mars? You think they care about some city in the States? You think they care about the IRS? No, they're on Mars. What's the IRS gonna do? Nothing. They're gonna have to do something because they benefit immediately from what they're doing. And just like your bubble economy over there, you're already doing it. They wanna build a school. Right. So they have these two artists over there that have they produce they're producing music and they're going to sell the music and they're going to contribute the proceeds to the formation of this school. And he wanted to know how to do it. And I said, whatever's most convenient. I would think when the money comes in, everybody understands the money's designated, the proceeds are designated for this purpose. That's what these guys want to do. Everybody likes it. You set up in a most convenient way for your community and then if there's other interests, and it's a public function, right? It's a school. So make all your money transactions public. So everybody gets to have a say in it. Even though it's not their intellectual property, it's the music of these two people, they've contributed to the formation of this school. So now it becomes a public interest, right? We don't need a government agency for that because what I just described was a function of government, managing something where public funds are being used. That's what this is. You're already there is what I told them. So just, you know, as I just thought it was a, an interesting example. I rarely have a conversation like that, but just realize what's going on when we're, we're setting up companies and so that we can maintain 
property rights in a way that's not being intruded upon by the state. And then we get into what, you know, and thank you, Ray, for setting this up and inviting people that really are interested in this subject, because I think it's going to help set many people free. But the reason why I begin the conversation with this is because I, I really want people to be empowered and understand when you have property rights and where things come from. Um, he was also asking me this question. He said, he, he still, he, he's trying to shut down the company in Ireland and it's, they make it such a nightmare to do so. You have to pay all these taxes and fill out these forms and really, come on, what, what's the point? Okay, so it's so expensive and difficult to shut down a company, why? So here, do this. If, you, if they wanna play this game on you, here's what you do. You play the game right back. You simply amend the articles and you 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 give the ownership, the shares or the interest over to some cartoon characters. Literally, Bugs Bunny is my favorite. Pick one of these characters and name them in the articles. You have every right to do that and then stop using the company. And what that does is it removes you from any legal liability to the company because the company basically essentially sold the company, you see? Did you have to dissolve it? No, let the government deal with that. Now you're off the hook. It doesn't uh, pertain to you anymore. Walk away. You see, you have property rights and they're being taken all the time. You just have to learn how to interact with the system and you want to get on with your life, okay? I, I think you don't want to wind up in a several years of litigation in the courts and arguing with idiots. <clears throat> you know, sometimes we need to make a public record, but you want to solve problems and move on with your life because some part of the system is to waste your time. Mm. Just like, you know, the phone addiction, download the app for this and that and this. So now pretty soon you're going to have to use apps all the time just to get through society. And that's also designed, I think, to waste your time. People get addicted to these, whatever information they're getting on their phone and they're not getting good information mostly. And there's a, there's a phone addiction there. There's, I think there's a dopamine addiction. I think the people that stare at their phones all day are addicted to dopamine. I think it's a drug addiction. Mm -hmm. I also think it's a mental disorder which is probably unclassified. Anyways, I don't want to get too far out. But thank you again, Ray, uh, for bringing this up. And, and Ray and Moko are my team, and they, and they are great about, they teach me stuff. I screw things up. Then they say, hey, John, are you sure? And they do the research, and thank you guys. So talking about easements, the whole idea behind that, and I started talking about this last year, because you have two aspects to real estate. Most people talk about foreclosures. They understand that, I think. There's two types in the States. You've got the... Um, the uh, quick, you got the deeds, okay, the trust deed states where they just list your house for sale and then sell it. And then there's the judicial foreclosure. They have to sue and prove a case, right? Um, judicial takes longer, trust deeds don't take so long, but everybody understands what happened, what's happening there is the title's being transferred. So the lien holder on the title is exercising his lien rights. The mortgage itself is the law of the title. It's the law of the property. It's a statute. The mortgage is a statute, guys. You have state statutes, you have a mortgage. Let me just say something else that will shock some of you out there. The mortgage being a law unto itself, the mortgage is the law of the property. So is the statute that governs how the mortgage can operate. There's boundaries, okay? This is all part of the common law that y'all talk about all the time. The statutes are the common law. So are mortgages. They're all part of the common law. So is the trust organization that my uncle Bob and I just wrote together for the benefit of my children and his children, okay? That's the law of some property. We write laws and use laws all the time. We just don't know what we're doing. We don't understand. We go to lawyers and lawyers sell you paper. They don't sell you solutions and understanding. So what we have come up with, I think, is a, an effective way of retaining the possession rights of property that would be foreclosed upon where the title is being taken away from you and normally you don't have a remedy because they're gonna take the title. They're just going to take it. You can fight them in court and you can file stuff, but they're going to take the title. And I'm not going to get into why. Okay, we, we've covered that before, but <clears throat> knowing that's going to happen in a foreclosure that, let's say judicial in Florida, okay? So they foreclose on the property. And let's say the person that got foreclosed upon who used to be the title holder, now is not the title holder. He's the, he's the uh, tenant in possession. <laughs> he's just still there, all right? Well, you can't just go there and, and drag him out of the house and throw his furniture out there. You can't, that's illegal, right? You got to get the sheriff involved. So in order to do that, you have to ask the court for a writ, a order to take possession. You already have the title. That's not, that's not good enough. Right. Okay. So we have to go back to the court and show the court why 
I have a right to take possession and get this guy out. He didn't pay his mortgage and we have to evict him. So we have to get a writ of possession or a writ of ejectment or a writ of possession and something like that. Okay. And uh, there's another word for it. But anyways, writ of possession. Once I have the writ of possession, I can have the sheriff come out or the police, but the sheriff come out and make the person leave under police power by physical force. I can't do it. I can have the sheriff do it. That's how we do things in civil society. Well, this demonstrates the two different aspects of property ownership. Because I was on the title, I got to enjoy the property and, oh, I had the right to sell the property too. That's pretty comprehensive, right? That's a lot of rights. I also had the right by virtue of the, being the title holder, I had the right of possession. What I didn't know is that right of possession can be separated from the title. And the way I would do that is through what's known as an easement. And we benefit from easements all the time from our utility companies. You know, the cable guy, right? The water and all that stuff. All the wires and the pipes that go under your ground that go from your sidewalk, your street, your public right of way up into your you know side of your yard and stuff like that in the suburbs or the side of the building, right? If you're in an apartment complex. These are established by easements. So nothing precludes us from, and the easement, by the way, was given by the title holder at some point in the past. This is only how it's done. The person with the title has the right to convey an easement and nobody else does. You can't give an easement on your neighbor's property unless you are on his title. Only he can do that. Now, a person who wants an easement right can ask for it and go to the title holder. He always has to go to the title holder. Now, what's interesting, I'll give you an interesting scenario. I had um, uh, I was helping a client the other day, um, and this is the first time I had done this, and I'll just show you with you how I did it. Uh, he wanted to install some solar equipment on the property to produce solar energy, and they needed the solar company. He was in a landlocked situation. He had to go through. He had to use easements on his surrounding neighbor's property, and the easements were pretty well in place. It was a farming community. There were farmers. So the easements were pretty well there. It's just that the solar company wasn't using an easement. It was using a lease on the easement. Very interesting. We do that. We're going to talk about this. The solar company has a lease agreement that allows it access to use the easement. It's leasing the easement. So the solar company has an interest in maintaining the equipment on the property. It takes money to put the equipment there, right? So because it's a lease agreement, the solar company continues to own the property. Well, if the title is foreclosed upon and someone else takes possession of the property, because you, you can do that, through the foreclosure, it may jeopardize the interests of the solar company who just only has a leasehold. He doesn't have an easement. He doesn't have title. He doesn't have a lien. He just has a leasehold. So what we had to do is come up with what's called, and here's the title of this. It's a subordination, non-disturbance, atonement agreement. You've heard me use the word atonement before. This demonstrates my use of the word atonement to explain about lawyers, but staying on subject here, the solar company, I got on the phone because here's what I did uh, years ago, several years ago, this is an older client. I put a lien on his property to strip the equity. So his company is the lien holder, but it looks funny if he's talking to the solar company because the solar company wants to talk to the lien holder. If he's talking to this guy, who's also the title holder, it just looks funny. No problem. It just looks funny. And because I know what to do, I just said, well, get me on the phone with him and I'll act like the lender. <laughs> so I get on the phone with the solar company and it just turns out he explained a whole situation like I just explained to you. And, and I said, okay, well, you guys just need this, this contract so that if there's a foreclosure on the property, your property rights are preserved with the easement. He said, yep. So I said, no problem. I'll get it to you right away. Now, I've never done this before. I don't know what a subordination non-disturbance a tournament agreement is. I know what he's trying to do. I understand what has to be in the agreement. I've just never written one before. So, and I'm sharing this trade secret with you guys. Please consider this for things you need in your life. Don't get run over because you lack knowledge. You can go do stuff. I went to the chat GPT and I started a conversation with it. I just went there and said, hey, can you write me a contract that has to do with subordinating uh, uh, rights uh, in a lease agreement on an easement? And the thing said, yeah, sure. What do you have in mind? So I said, well, here's what I really need. And I said, I need a contract that is that subordinates certain rights to not to to so that the uh, a, a title holder cannot disturb the terms of a lease agreement. 
when the title changes parties' names, okay? This is another word for this is known as a tournament, okay? So as soon as I said that, the agreement showed up. <laughs> now I had to go modify it. You know, it's a two, it was a two page contract. I just went through and I made sure that there, certain things were in there and not in there. And I made it very simple. And then uh, went back to the client and we modified it according to the specific facts and done deal. Okay. So this was an interaction with easement rights and it was very complex. What he described was, yeah, they had long-term, they had easement rights that were established by two or three property owners before the farm owner of this you know, period, like decades ago, right? And they're still there and everybody understood them and they're all going by them. Leading into this conversation, hey, let's set up an easement right while we still can, while we're the title holder, while we have the right to do all kinds of stuff to the property. If I have the right to sell the property, the title of the property, that means I have rights to do all kinds of stuff. That means I pretty much have all the rights, don't I? I have more rights than the state and the city and everybody else. The thing that we don't realize is that there are lien holders that make claims on the property. Mm -hmm. So when you have all those rights, you have all those rights. These are property rights. And I'm not talking about property in the term sense of real estate. I'm talking about the right to do stuff with property. That's a property right. So I have all these property rights by virtue of me being on the title, my name on the title. And then the state has a lien on it. The HOA has a lien on it. Everybody has a lien on it, okay? The mortgage company has a lien on it. All right, I'm under that. <laughs> yeah, I'm the boss, but I still got to pay the bills, right? So if it happens where there's a foreclosure and I'm divested of my rights because of a lien, because that's what liens do, liens in many cases will divest you of the rights of the title. They have to, especially for a mortgage, okay? You have to take, you have to take all the rights because you have to be able to sell all the rights to recover your money because you're the lender, right? Well, if I convey my property rights to an easement, I have to do it to a third party. And the property rights I'm, I'm conveying have to be different than the ones I have right now. And one easy way to do that, so everybody in the world understands, hopefully, is to change the dimensions of the property in the easement. So you start with the original property legal description, and you change it when you go to the easement. And the easement should be a third party. It should be someone else, another party. It could be a corporation. It could be a trust. It could be your Uncle Bob. It could be anybody who doesn't have a beneficial interest or, or a, a, um, an ownership interest on the title. And I say beneficial interest because I'm going to suggest that it's that room you're renting out to that college student. It can't be him either because he's benefiting from the title holders right over the property. And how could you convey to him in a third party? He's not the third party. He still has similar beneficial interests, even though he's not on the title. So I would just, I would say, keep that, you know, as a word of caution, Make sure that when you convey the property rights that you have as a title holder to the easement, make sure it's another party. And that's what we do. We look at that situation. So Ray, if you would, and thank you again for setting this up, describe what we're looking at. What, what kind of situations are we looking at? Okay, yeah. Hey, I uh, yeah, I went to a meeting. I attended Agents of Truth in, in Atlanta last Wednesday night meeting and discussed and shared information about easements. And why they're so important because of the land grabs that are coming this way from out west, as well as the carbon collection pipeline. So we want to be proactive. And most people do not understand, but the title side, just like you were, you know, sharing with everybody, they do not understand possession is not intense of the law, and you can get that. I mean, uh, through an easement. Now, what I've seen is that most people are familiar with easements. So what we're able to do is, as long as everybody knows what John's philosophy is, is we mirror everything back against them. This is why it works so well, because they're not going to say, oh, this is some patriot mythology stuff. We just use our own rules right back against them, and they can't deny them. And, and a lot of conservation easements are really being used as predatory. <clears throat> For example, somebody asking there, how can you terminate an easement? The thing you have to understand is these people are signing easements. These farmers and ranchers they are being forced by it by attorneys and they don't understand and they're signing it and the terms, the devils and the details, the terms and conditions in that easement are what makes the whole difference, everything, just like any contract. It, but you can use these easements as an asset protection vehicle to protect your interest in the property, even if you lose mm -hmm. title. Hey, Jim. 
And uh, so that's what I explained to the, to the group and how urgent it is for everybody, not only in this state, but, you know, all the other states to become aware of this. Because a lot of the resistance that's going on is, is not being affected through lack of understanding, just like what you explained. Uh, yeah, they fight it in court. And then they want to argue about the title when they already gave up the lien rights. Why are you arguing? They gave up the lien right. Yeah, you and, gave up your permitting and all this stuff, taxes. Why are you arguing over it? <laughs> And we have to be very proactive in the states we're in. I'm in Georgia, Johnson, Florida, because they plan to run those pipelines through our state. Uh, 18 inch, 24 inch pipelines, 2,500 PSI and take everybody's land uh, unlawfully. But they they threaten eminent domain, but they get people to, to weigh the rights and sign these easements. And that's how they're doing it, which is what we're indicating to if you put your easement on your property first, it trumps their easement. You've all they can't they can't come in and put one. Well, they can't put one without your consent, and that's the problem. These guys don't know any better. They're giving they're just giving up their property. They, they, but it, would the, these things are written in a way that just defeats your use of the property. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's what we do. We do the opposite of that. I mean, you'll see in the easement agreement, we have this elaborate arbitration clause in there that divests the trial court of saying anything about the easement. Nobody can even challenge it. Mm -hmm. In fact, we make the new title holder your advocate. In the easement, he's required to defend your rights and your obligations in the easement. How's he ever going to challenge it? And who could say it's fraud? The government can't because... It's not a party to the contract. Only the title holder can do that. And that's that's one big difference in the way we're setting up the easement. The devil's in the details with the term with the terms and conditions. That and and you mentioned something too. So what I found is, I mean, so a lot of these easements are through trusts that are going on out west. Yeah. And uh, and they they come across to them like they're their friend, and these yeah. farmers sign these easements, and they are. Based on the terminology, it is perpetual and it can yep. never be changed. Yeah. So the property value goes down 40%. And so which makes the uh, property tax in the county go down because the property value, so it property tax goes down. So then what they're doing is the other ones that won't go along with it, they turn around and tell those other farmers, your property tax is going up because you're going to pay the difference on what we're losing from these other people. But But easements are not perpetual unless you sign one that is. Yeah. And you and can't change it. You can't undo it by doing a new easement because your next easement, especially with the way these guys are writing it, you're never going to be able to interfere with the previous easement. You can do a new easement. You're just not going to interfere with theirs. So you're not really you're, you're done. Once they do that one, you're done. Mm. Yeah, and and that's where we have to be proactive in this state because it has. So Georgia is supposed to, and Florida too, is supposed to have these pipelines starting up by 2030 in place. Uh, so, you know, we're a little bit behind, but hey, it's on the map. Mm -hmm. And the key, the key, what I talked about, uh, John, too, is that we have to control. We have to control our public officials in the counties. We start mm -hmm. with our, you know, the bottom uh, grassroots at the bottom. But we, we've got to take control of the counties and make damn sure that, you know, the county commissioners, the chair, the city council mayors, they better resist it, if not replace it. Yeah. I mean, go ahead, scope them out and see where they stand. You know, if they're, because they're, these people are taking money to go along with this stuff. It's, it's really the same thing that the U.S. government did to the American Indians. They're mm -hmm. just the same thing again. <laughs> same thing again. And for total fraud, there's no climate change problem. The people promoting no, it. That's all made up. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it, if it were a problem, yeah. there's no. Yeah. If they just stopped doing the that. chemtrails, it just might be a little nicer around here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> But, but they're serious. Okay, so there's an agenda. What I found out too, John, there's what's called, okay, we know about Agenda 30. There's what's called yeah. Agenda 3030. Yep. So oh, by Agenda yeah. 20, I mean, excuse me, by 2030, they intend to take 30% of all rural land and put it into conservation easements where nobody right. can get on it. I mean, right. you know, yeah, 30%. Wow. And what would that do yeah, to the food supply? What would that do to home ownership? What does that do to well, wealth? They're, they're taking yeah. over the food supply to do it. They're not yeah. just the land that we're not using. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. It's, for, it's for tyranny. Of course. I mean, what do you think the Indians thought? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're saying oh, yeah. the same thing. Yeah, we're the Indians now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
you know, we're the Indians now. But but anyway, so that's why I want to make a distinction. I just wanted to point that out because there are people that do understand easements. If they hear that, you know, they think, oh, that's a weapon of mass destruction. And it can be. It, it can be a pistol can be good if you're the one holding it or it could be bad if the other guy's holding it. So it depends on how it's yielded. That's true. And this is a very powerful tool that's being used against people, but we're going to use it. We'll show you how to use it against them and protect yourself. And just to comment on what Batman said, I would just say this in response to the word drones or unwanted drones. All I have to say is, uh, is target practice. <laughs> Jacob, did you want to ask something or inform us of something? Jacob, on you. Hey, thanks so much. I'm um, not sure if my connection is great. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So um, I uh, I have a property that's in uh, in uh, Whatcom, Washington County, and um, I'm going to have to remodel this um, this property here pretty soon. And the area that it's in has certain um, conservations. Um, like in the area that was created by the county because there's a, a lake and a watershed. But the thing is, is um, I'm, I want to come up with a strategy where I don't want to have to consult anybody in the building department for how I want to build or what I want to build. I don't, I don't want them leveling their fees on me or having to pay for, you know, inspections or any of that stuff. Um, and so that's the goal. But what I'm realizing is that they can levy fees and they can get the court involved and they can, you know, they can go through the process where they get a rid of mandate and, you know, you don't pay your fee, take yeah, your property and sell it. So, yeah. yeah. All, so looking, all those claims are on the title. They're, they're all on the title. So what I'm hearing is that if I set up an easement on the property, then that is going to, um, that's going to dominate the usage of that property. It can just make sure it doesn't interfere with the existing easement. So you have to be careful on that one, but sure. You could retain your use and enjoyment of the property through an easement and they can take the title and sell it to whoever they want. They'll get their fees. It just won't take you, take it away from you. So I'm, I guess I'm wondering, um, they're clearly going to use the police powers to divest me from that property. And I'm wondering, do I need to start preparing myself to, to deal with them, you know, through making uh, motions and um, challenging them, you know, in the, in the, in the public courts on the record or um, cause I'm, you know, I'll be, I'll be basically challenging their, their police team powers. I mean, I don't why? see why they would. Uh, why? You're, why? I explain, you already gave them the lien rights. You already gave them the property. When you took the title, that's the system we're in. It's a feudal system. You gave them the lien rights. Let them take them. Just transfer. Sure. While you have the rights over the title, transfer the rights you want. Transfer those over to an easement. Over to an easement. Um, and so I guess my question for you guys, if you guys have been doing this, is um, how has it how has it been, you know, dealing with the uh, with the sheriffs or the you know the police. The policing arm arm of the county and the courts. Um, Nothing has been so far. We have to we have to get um, arbitration awards completed, and then we'll have access to the courts to get the writ of possession. And then that's the question: if it's a dominant estate, which is controlling? It's going to be the easement, but I don't I don't I don't know how that's going to play out. But right now we haven't gotten to that point. So really nothing has changed on that system. Right. So this is like a work in progress and, and um, we need to see like how that, that part of the. Well, it is using the law. I mean, just like force, it, we're just using um, the way it is. There's no, there's no guessing here. We're just doing what we're supposed to do. So let's just see what the, what the police do, what the courts do. But uh, if they follow the law right. and the dominant estate then re retains the easement rights, irrespective of who the title holder is, the title holder is bound by it because of the way we set it up. So the title holder. Sure. And that has to be disclosed. 
It, it is. It's on, that's why we recorded it. That, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it has to be disclosed. Anyone buying that property has to be like, oh, what's this easement? Correct. And if it's you not know? disclosed, is there an if, if it's not disclosed, then it's not binding on the title holder. So you, if we try to give notice through other means other than public recording of it, then there's a, there's ability to challenge if notice is proper. <laughs> I've seen cases where it lasts a whole year just on that issue alone. Mm -hmm. So we record it in the county and problem solved. <laughs> sure. Um, and then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter say what the municipality or you know the 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 building department or what anybody's no that's all about the time um, nope they could do whatever they want yeah that's, yeah that's that's all that's all about the title um well it'll yep. be really interesting to see how they enforce it or how they don't enforce it yeah. the the easement is immune to whatever they want to do to the title put it that way yeah yeah i'm 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 under i'm understanding that um for sure um I just had a friend recently, she didn't have an easement. She went down this really unfortunate Patriot myth mythology thing, started, yeah. you know, stop paying yeah. taxes. And, you know, they just, they took her property and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't, it was. wasn't pretty, you know? Yeah, they, I know you got the tax protesters that don't know the yeah. law and they come in and they, and they get into other areas. They don't know what they're doing at all. And they just, they just say, they take their same stupid documents and they change the names and they go, send this. They don't even understand what, what's going on there. So that's so unfortunate. Yeah, I, I, I did that before and I learned it didn't work. <laughs> I was lucky enough to have to watch people do it because I'm very cautious. And when I heard about this stuff, I was like, nah, I can't be like that. You know, I was a big skeptic. This is back in the early 90s. And I, I watched people and then I went and did research very cautiously. And I spent a few years looking into all this stuff. And then I found what was going on and I started looking at, you know, doing some casework professionally and luckily i was able to learn from my clients <laughs> so i didn't have a lot of the problems but i have seen it so many times people get their hopes up and they they think this well-written document that looks really cool mm. that all these legal citations somehow matters to some idiot in an office somewhere when he just wants to keep his job he doesn't care what you say so we just want to yeah. we want to avoid the confrontation right we don't want to argue with these robots really is what it is mm. would you say that the um the actual um the courts and the cases moving through the courts uh is does that have pa power and standing or is that would you say would you, you also you, robots the, the court is a function of the banking system and it's used to get access to the police power i'll just say that i don't want to make this a big long conversation but let me go to cutthroat and see what she wants to or he wants to sure thanks yeah, John, uh, uh, we've got some squatters that live in a property, a couple of houses down, and um, the owner of the house lives in California, and we're in New Mexico, and not, nothing's really being done. You know, we've gone through the uh, city council and, uh, you know, the police and written up uh, complaints, and I was thinking about contacting them, maybe I could uh, talk them into allowing me to be uh, a tie, you know, part title holder to be able to get an easement, and then I can go in and and remove them. Do you have any suggestions concerning that? You trying to help your neighbor because you're a nice guy. Yeah, and uh, also these guys are nutballs. You know, they're crapping in my front yard and they're uh, okay, stealing so from people's houses. Oh, so you need to make police reports. You probably yeah, need... already did that. All right, good. And then on the uh, title holder, you know, have your friend make a an insurance claim with the county. For allowing this to happen it's it's withholding public resources and allowing damages to be incurred on your property his property okay so okay so i so i need to make an insurance claim or have our neighbors make an insurance have your neighbors, claim i don't know that you would but your neighbors would because they're in his home okay now i would also have i would suggest that he probably get an attorney and get a writ of possession against john does one through 100. that may be, allow him to clear the property out <laughs> I'm sorry, say that last part again. Have him get a writ of possession against John Doe's one through 100 regarding his property. These unnamed squatters. But we don't know the name. So just put John Doe one through 100. There's people in the property. This is not yeah, unprecedented. Right. You would apply for a writ of possession. Yeah. Now that gives you access to the police. 
Okay. Well, I mean, I'm having a difficult time getting a hold of them. So I, I just wanted... That's not part of this discussion. I'm just answering a question. You can do what you want. That's what I would do. Now, if you want to play dirty, if you want to play dirty, okay. if, you, if you want to play dirty, what I would suggest is consider, and this is the, the misuse of police resources or public funds, but however, maybe they're dealing, they're manufacturing crystal meth in there, or maybe they're selling drugs to children, and maybe you should report it as a concerned citizen. I'm not saying SWAT team them, but... If that were to happen, boy, that would that would turn it around. That would make. Would you make a complaint to the Drug Enforcement Agency? Yeah, DEA. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you already did that, Todd. I've already done. Be careful about making a false report, though. I've done those things. I can't hear you. Yeah, I did. I've done all those. We can't hear you, Todd. <laughs> Well, they, they're they are dealing drugs, you know, and they're going out and they're, they're hey guys. Why don't I have control, administrative control over this? I can't mute them. Can you? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you. I'm sorry, I'm muting everybody. Ray and Moko, you can unmute. All right, that's interesting. Is there any other question, Ray? Did you want to continue on with what you're? You you've got a lot of questions in the chat. If you okay. want to. I, I gotta, then I got to put my glasses on. Shoot. Wrap it up. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Well, if you want, I can read them to you. Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I, I'm going to go from the bottom up. Uh, can a county shut off water and all utilities with an easement? I believe everybody's prevented from doing that. I believe they have to become the title holder first. Okay. Uh, let's see here. How can I make sure that a title holder, such as, how can I make right, sure that so I'm not going to answer that one. Just skip that one. I'm sorry, Ellen. That's too long, and it's about tax protests and stuff. I'm not going to talk oh, about it. Yeah, I'm not doing Ellen's. Um, I, here's one. How okay. can a title holder make sure that the easement holder doesn't push them out of their property? Can can you ever cancel the easement? No, th there has to be an agreement to remove the easement. The title holder push the easement holder? Yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, say Sally is saying, if I come to you for your services and I get an easement, how can I make sure that the person I give the easement to doesn't push me out of my property? Well, that's in the contract. Right. They're not understanding. It's written that way. So you don't yeah, get, you, can totally you don't get screwed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't write you a screw yeah, easement. We write you an question. easement that protects you. You can read it yourself. Look, yeah. the, the easement is the law of the property. We're not going to give you something that's going to be haphazard like that. Dumb money. What kind of wisdom do you have for us? Got to unmute that first. Yeah, dumb money. Your hands up, but we can't hear you because you're oh, muted. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, John. Hey, everybody. Um, question for John. Um, uh, you had mentioned, um, sorry, to uh, Dr. M. Uh, about um, about a month ago, he was having issues with his single member LLC at uh, his his bank, Fifth Third, um, and he had attempted to um, cash in some cryptos um, through his single member LLC at Fifth Third, and that did not work out. I really so, want to focus on easements. Oh, we were only talking about easements. Can I do that? Yeah, because Ray has. Yeah, you know, he invited a lot of people to talk about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't okay. mind answering by email or something or just text me a message. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. text. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, uh, so you, you guys got the idea. Um, it's just a process and I think we've done pretty well to make it uh, unassailable because easements are unassailable. You just have to administer them properly and we have to realize what you're doing. What we want to do is get access to the police power, just like the title holder does. And as the dominant estate, we would be allowed or able to overcome whatever the title holder wants to do on the property because he cannot interfere with the easement rights. And then we can do whatever we want. That's why we use an, one of the elements we use is a lease agreement. I don't believe it's so important, but we have that as a measure. But I think more really what's going to be important is we have an arbitration award and 
We have an arbitration clause that takes the whole matter out of the court system. And we have an arbitration panel of people just like you and me, jury members. Hey, John, Kim what? wants to know if an easement would work for an apartment building. And I'm assuming Kim means an apartment building that she owns. Yeah, right? she owns the building. Of course, you can you can do that. Of course, you can do that. You have to be the title holder. Okay, Kim is saying no. So then if you're a you have renter, to make an agreement with the title then, holder. No, you wouldn't be. You able have to, to go to the title it. holder and, and get an easement agreement. I don't know why the title holder would do that. But yeah, you could, if you can reach an agreement with the title holder, or if you are the title holder, you can form an easement agreement. You yeah. have to be the title holder to make an easement. So if if you're talking about an apartment that you rent from somebody, how could you make an easement? You don't have the right to. Yeah, why would the why would the title holder do that? I wouldn't. <laughs> okay, she says it's a co-op. Why don't you go ahead and speak, Kim? Because we're not really understanding your question. Kim's saying it's a, a, a Kim. Yeah, if, you, if you have title, it's like uh -huh. this. If you have title, yes, you can form an easement. You need a third party. It has to show as a third party. I like using a limited liability company. Okay. So she's saying, I think it's being explained as it's an apartment co-op that is owned inside of a building. So she's a co-op owner of an, of an okay, apartment so with a building. This is, what, this is why I say it this way. If you have the right to sell it, then the answer is yes. You have to have the right to sell the property. Mm -hmm. that, that's going to give you lots of rights. Then you can form an easement. Mm -hmm. And Eric, I think your question was answered earlier by John in writing. Eric's asking again, if multiple people's names are on the title, do they all have to be involved in creating an easement? And I think you answered that, John. You can you have said. one person, as long as the ownership in the deed is described as joint and several. The owners are joint owners jointly and severally, right? If that's the case, then any one of the title holders can convey all of the rights that he has to sell the property. It's just that he couldn't actually close in the deal unless he got agreement from the other parties, but every other right he can exercise individually because the deed said so. I'm not saying that. The deed said so. Remember, the deed is also the law of the property. It imposes terms on the title, all right? So check your deed. Okay. Kat is asking, is an easement a right of usage? Thank you for defining it. Yes, it is. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. Someone was saying, this is kind of wacky. I, I don't know. It just kind of sounds wild to me regarding the squatters. What do you think about renting the property to someone who'll get in there and live with the squatters in order to push them out. There's a guy down All right. <laughs> it's, I mean, there's well, very creative ways to look at this stuff. You gotta, you gotta be effective guys. And you don't mm -hmm. want to get into a violent confrontation with somebody. So like I said before on the squatters, you, you make the insurance claim, you know, you, you make an insurance claim with the county for not doing whatever. Cause I think the counties are involved in this stuff. I've never heard of squatting being anything less than 20 years of being on a property and using the property without, you know, mm -hmm. without any you know, in, in, interference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could be seven years, but not a week. So make your insurance claim, but also apply to the court for a root of possession. That's the first thing I do. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go and confront the people. And if you want to play hardball, be a little nasty, accuse them of drug dealing or something like that. Or mm -hmm. maybe that, uh, you heard children shouting from the basement. I mean, really. Uh, a question. Um, let's see. Is one limited in the percentage of one's property that is defined as the easement? Okay, it's a bit of an art. So it's like I said before, the property described in the easement has to be different and it will be less than the title. So why I like to do it so it's plain and simple. I like to just cut off an edge of the property. Let's cut off one linear meter or five meters, linear meters from the southwest corner to the northwest corner. And just describe it. Or mm -hmm. remove uh, 10 square meters from the northwest corner. Don't, don't do something like um, remove from the easement the strip of land that gives you where you're driving your car up in the driveway. Don't do that, even though the other party, the title holder, the new one, couldn't obstruct your use of it 
it might create a situation where he could obstruct your use of it. You know, mm-hmm. you want to avoid drama and controversy. So just change the d- definition or the the uh, description of the property, the legal description. Like here's mm-hmm. one, there's another way to do it. You can also say that the easement excludes the use of uh, any timber on the property, excludes the use of waterways, Excu- excludes the use of the mother-in-law suite, things of that nature, mm-hmm. things that you don't care about, right? Right. <clears throat> but basically you're using the easement to, to uh, be able to retain uh, control and possession. So, so with that in mind, that's how you draft, that's how we would draft yeah. the easement for you. Yeah. And also there's a whole process, obviously, in, in uh, making the easement uh, work for you. And that's, that's why it's like, don't just go write an easement maybe use the services that we offer so we you know you get, get the word easement. easement you start googling it and you're just going to get yourself into a, a, a heap of trouble i'm not saying we're the only solution but mm. you, you got to think this stuff through we spent months developing this whole plan because you have to look at it from beginning to end you cannot write up an easement and think your court's gonna uphold it they, there's a scheme behind the court mm-hmm. system. so we want to just simply avoid the court system and get serious and get people who have judicial authority to make an arbitration award we have every right to do that mm-hmm. and uh, then we can then go back to the court because we did give the court a monopoly on access to the police power this is just how it is because the police power is very dangerous mm-hmm. it's being used against us right now by the banking system and right. this is the way in to use it in a way that's going to serve us to protect right. us and still keep us in a civil society i think so here's a question. Trader B is asking. So easements are for the purpose of keeping the property in case I'm not paying the mortgage, basically. <laughs> okay, you can say it that way. I'm not trying to encourage people not to pay the mortgage, but sure, if it just turns out that you're not and you're facing a foreclosure, okay. All right. If you really, really want to stay there, put an easement on there and you know proceed to use the property under the rights established in the easement that used to be the title holders. They've been conveyed to the easement holder. The foreclosure takes place and those rights were preserved. And whoever the easement holder, the grantee wants to give those rights to can do so. Um, Christiane is saying, would it be beneficial to have an actual person listed alongside the LLC as grantees on the easement to provide easier access to the courts? You don't need to do it that way. What mm. we do is we, you don't have to do it at all like that. But l- lately we added a, an assignment provision in there that says that the grantee may assign the rights to anybody. So that allows you to do it. And besides, we're going through arbitration. So you can represent your corporation or the easement holder. If the grantee is a corporation, he can go through arbitration. The only thing they're going to have difficulty with is to apply to the court for a writ of possession as the arbitration award holder. We'll get to that. We'll figure that out later. Hey, John, Kendra's asking, how does having an easement on one's property protect you from someone else, like the government, from obtaining another easement on the property? Well, one easement can't be adversely affected by a new easement, and an easement is established by agreement. So a title holder would have to enter into that agreement. The title holder would have to do that. So let's just talk about subsequent easements. If I have an easement and we're doing it in the purpose that we're talking about here, no one's going to be able to come in with a new easement and interfere with that. Just like a new title holder wouldn't be able to do that. So it wouldn't matter who it is. Uh, S is SH is asking, have you had a client go through the process already and retain possession of the property with the easement despite of foreclosure? Um, we haven't gone through the, the whole process yet because we're just starting to enter into arbitration. Uh, we've had a couple of people, there was a, we became aware of a land grab in Sonoma County and the um, county is very aggressively trying to to take people's property and we have uh, some clients there and we've started to work with them. One of the things that we've inherited is kind of a bit of a mess that they had on their hands. We're trying to navigate the mess, but we're just now getting to the point where we've already uh, sent a demand for arbitration and we're going to, we've got a, a case management services that are like starting the arbitration process and we expect to be in arbitration within 60 days. 
to, to add to that too. So, so what the, what's going on out west is what you're going to start seeing across where you, it already is already happening. So the county will put excessive fines through zoning onto the property that the people cannot pay to run it up so it'll put it in receivership. On the case that Mo, yeah. <clears throat> Moco's talking about, they it has busted their it has busted their head uh, their chop so bad that the receiver is asking the court what to do. He's lost. It's hilarious. He's, yeah, he's, it's yeah, hilarious. He, to do yet. He, and he can't ask the court what to do, but he's doing oh, it. We no. told our client to instruct him. Tell him to go back to law school. Yeah. Get his money back. Yeah. And I want to make a comment here. Um, SH said, well, good luck. Please keep us posted. This is not how we operate. Okay. I know that you're looking at this going, well, it hasn't been tested yet. So therefore, I'm, not gonna, I'm going to wait and see what everybody else does. Okay, fine. But time is now, man. <laughs> Why? They are rolling it out. It's the law. It's how it works. And this is not some sort of theory. So, you know, so many people do that, have done that over the years, especially with things I do. And they just go, well, I hope it really works out. Let me know. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go out of my way and go back and say, hey, look, it worked. No, because even if we know it's going to work, we know it's the proper thing to do. Uh, it doesn't matter if it works for one person. It doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else. It's a legal process and it should work the same for everybody but you know how our system is. So I really, you know, just want to just make the comment that if your attitude is, wow, good luck. Let me know if it works. No, I'm not. If you Elaine has something like that, use it. Elaine has her hand up, but just before yeah. going on to that, there's a couple of people like asking all these kind of nervous questions about what if the easement screws me over? People, you are the easement. <laughs> you are the easement. <laughs> okay, look, it's funny because the easement is held in a, an entity. Yeah, that you control. The entity doesn't drive a car. It can't be accused of, uh, you know, a bar fight. Uh, and it's not going to die. You could dissolve it. The state would recognize it being reinstated, though. So, yeah, I mean, gosh. Right. We just suggest that you, uh, you know, nominate a friend to be the manager so that there's uh, so that there's a little distance between you and Anybody can step in the easement's place. And then you can change them, move them out, yeah. whatever. Like we set this up with a company and I can actually step in the name of your company and manage your easement for you. I'm not going to. I'm just saying anybody can do it. That's why we set it up that way. We didn't make Bill Smith the easement holder. Because if Bill Smith dies, y'all are in a bad problem, in a bad situation. Now it's part of his estate. Ooh, <laughs> that's a mess. <laughs> We're not doing that. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we just want to help people. We want to educate people and I will work with you. I mean, if you already understand some of this stuff, we don't mind consulting with you, but for, for many people, it's new. And so don't just sit back and go, gee, I hope it works. Let me know. If you need something, if you see this as a strategy, possibly try it. Uh, it's not a guess. It's just a, a process, you know, and I'll give you the example. And I'll just give you one example. Way back in 20 something years ago, I was showing people how they could use the Consumer Credit Protection Act to stop debt collectors and prevent, you know, the need for debt settlement, bankruptcy and all this stuff. I was keeping people out of bankruptcy court and they were keeping their money and just following the law. And yeah, they would have a wage garnishment but it would be a far a far better deal than them trying to pay the creditors back. Like eight creditors, $60,000 in credit card debt, right? $100,000 in credit card debt. They weren't paying any of it back. Or if they were, maybe they were paying $12,000 back over a period of eight years. That's like free. That's like the best settlement you can get. And I was showing people how to do that just by a statute that was on the books that no one was talking about, the Consumer Credit Protection Act. And it's the same situation then. They had to take my word for it. I'm not a lawyer. And even if I were a lawyer, you still have to take my word for it. <laughs> it doesn't mean I know everything. And so I took it a step further because that's not good enough. I don't want to pay those banks a dime. I actually set up, I had a program where I hired him to uh, write special code so that he can manage my new clients. When they came in as a new client, I would have a database for the new client, but I would also assign them in a database where we would create a lawsuit, a judgment against our new clients that would immunize them against debt collections and they would pay nobody. They wouldn't even get a wage garnishment because of what we created. It was so outrageous because my salespeople were telling my prospective clients that we're gonna end up suing you to prevent you from being sued from everybody else. And of course, we had a very high conversion rate, by the way. 
But I think people did it because they were at their wits end. They're like, okay, whatever, I'll do anything, you know, because they hated what the attorneys were saying, but don't be in that situation. And I'm not saying I got lucky, you know, with some theory. All I did was follow the rules of civil procedure. I just followed them and I used them in an advantageous and an effective way. And that's all we're doing here. It's another example of that. Elaine, did you want to say something? You had your hand up. I just have a quick question. All um, right. Uh, I tried to get into the affiliate group this past Tuesday, and the uh, Zoom just kept spinning and spinning, saying, "Wait." Didn't start that call. Sorry. What was that? You didn't start that call. You did not. Okay. No. I, I I'm just want to make sure gonna, I didn't. I'm not going to do that call until I see like a people making sales and closing them, and then I'm actually privately talking with people that are actually closing sales, and I want to help them. So I, I don't want to spend more time on every like Tuesday, but I will have a group call for people that are actually closing sales. Okay. Yeah, we're just talking about sales stuff anyway, so. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Ray, Moko? No, I can, I can tell you this. So what I've seen is uh, understanding easements, how powerful they are. They have companies now that have whole portfolios of easements. And they're doing what you said earlier, where like I have a portfolio of easements, so you want to rent? You want to rent this easement or do you right. want to buy this easement? And so right. it's, but right. it's all all the negative. Of course, it's all on the dark side, but we're doing right. opposition to They're that. They're using it. They're using it. We're not, we're, this is not a theory. It is a weapon being used against, it's a, it's a legal process being used as a weapon against us. Wake up and use it quickly. Okay. It's like your enemy just discovered, remember the Greek called the Greek fire? Remember this? And you guys study history? The, the Greek Greeks fire? Greek fire, the Greeks figured out how to take make tar and set it on fire and launch it with a, a, a trebuchet. Oh. A vault, a vault, right? They figured out how to launch it into the castles or away from the castles, right? So they would launch this fiery ball of tire, a, ta a tar into the top of the castle, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the tar, they would try to put it out with water and it would spread the fire everywhere because it was oil-based. The Greek fire was basically a ball of oil on a substrate that was... You can't put it out. It would wipe mm. out the whole, you know, the infantry on the castle, mm. and then they could storm the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Well, your enemy just figured out Greek fire. You better go figure out what the Greek fire is. We got it. You better use it too. It's just just like any other, you know, weapon, mm -hmm. any other process. Just like arbitration, they used that. They were using that against us, uh, and I did. I did it against them, and it shut them down. They couldn't continue using it against us because I did it against them and it exposed the fraud. It's actually a fraudulent use of using a correct legal process. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of how things are being done this day, these days. <laughs> it's, an abuse, it's an abuse of a legal process is what's being mm -hmm. done. It's like eminent domain. I mean, that's bound to be abused anyways, eminent domain. I mean, eminent domain was adopted by the government that just took the land from the Indians. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Kendra's wanted to know if easements are being what could used. What go wrong with that? You know? <laughs> yeah. Kendra's now wanted to be misapplied. See, the eminent domain being misapplied is not being used for public use. It's Don't being complain. Used for private. Don't yeah. complain. Go get the weapon from your enemy and use it against mm -hmm. them. Right, right. Well, Kendra's asking if easements are being used in a predatory manner, would this trigger a class action lawsuit by a smart lawyer? Stop with the class action lawsuit. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> it doesn't do anything except make the lawyers rich. No. You're just helping them. You're working for them. Don't do it. Nothing. There's nothing better than 47 lawsuits filed over a period of a year and a half over a similar matter. That's effective. Not a class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But look, what we're doing is we're using the court to do the one thing we want it to do. Get us the police. We don't care about what the judge thinks. We already handled that through arbitration. We just need your signature to get the the sheriffs out there. We have that power. Okay, yeah, and building without permits. Yes, I'm doing that on mine. I'm putting my first easement down. I'll put two more down. And partially it's to raise capital, but it's also to do whatever I want without permitting. You guys should come out there. I'm going to build some uh, yurts. 
if you know what those are. Big ones, not little teeny tiny ones, but nice ones. Yeah, I want to come see that. Air conditioning, the whole works. <laughs> I might have to get you one. Steph likes that idea. She's like, yeah. <laughs> if somebody's asking, they want to see our, see the easement. Okay, let me describe it to you. It is a, a document. It's written on a piece of paper if you print it out. And it's a series of words. That's me being a smart ass, sorry. No, we're not gonna show you the document. You can go look at one. They're all in your town, they're on your property. Some are not exactly easy to find because they're old, you know, but you can find easements. You can even ask, should I say, guys, should I say, use chat GPT? You that, love that uh, thing. I don't, I don't, what, I don't like it. What did I start? Okay. If you go to chat GPT and are polite and ask it to create a simple easement agreement, you will get, you will get an idea of what it looks like. Yeah. So imagine but, you, yeah. if you're using your property for things, okay, you're, you know, cutting the grass and then your kids are playing soccer there on the weekends and whatever, you're parking the car there. Okay. These are the way you're enjoying the property. So what you want to do is express those rights in an easement agreement. We do that generally. So the agreement is the title holder says, yeah, the easement holder can do these things. He can enjoy the use of the property. And then here are, his, here are his obligations. He can't tell me what to do, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. He can't uh, block the uh, driveway when I go to park my car, the easement holder, right? If they're two adverse interests, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it is. It's a contract on the use and enjoyment of the property. Mm -hmm. And it's also, um dealing with the particular problem that you're facing so the easement is crafted to deal with whatever it is that you're trying to retain you know how you the control it's you're trying to retain. the property we write it for your favor yeah and it also has a certain kind of um uh dispute clause in it and it also has certain aspects of how the easement is carried on should the title holder change there are certain tweaks and things and I don't know what um, building uh, permits have to do with insurance. I mean, you won't get it. Maybe you won't get insurance without building permits, but uh, I don't know. You have to be ask a different question. I don't know what that is. Uh, right now, there's a single one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but th you get the idea. And so this is, uh, this is something that we can do. Um, I really want to reach more people. Uh, we are the government, y'all. We have the judicial power. We need to use yeah. it. We're to blame if this whole system fails, and it is. I mean, we've got, I'm seeing right now where when I'm interacting with banks, the banking system and other organizations, the people I'm interacting with, like employees that work in an office, so to speak, okay, they're not even the decision makers anymore. There's no boss that you can talk to. Yeah. They're interacting with software. They don't even know what they're doing. Right. They're form fillers and we're all being asked to be form fillers and the form doesn't give you any leeway. It's, it's, you can they really see be there. Yeah. Yeah. They could be replaced by a kiosk in one day. They don't even know mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, they pretty soon they, they just won't have a job, whatever. Um, so this is happening right now. Software is being used against us uh, for nefarious purposes. So. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this call. It's been an hour. Thank you so much for participating. Um, thank you for the this question. Is great stuff, um, John. I'm so glad you went into the details of this. Uh, really appreciate it. Very okay. helpful. Thanks, everybody. I'll, I'll, this is recorded, so I'll make it available uh, through the Telegram uh, listing. I'll, I'll, it's gonna be private, I think, on YouTube. All right. Unless Ray, you tell me otherwise. What do you think? <laughs> well, let me know. I'll just give you the link. You do what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We got hey. one more question. Who's that? Yeah, that's you me. It's Ray. Yeah, yeah. Just a quick question. I was just looking at privacyfight.io. Do you guys have um, something formulated for what we would pay to get you to write up our easements? Oh, the yeah, Zunga. the Zunga has that information. Yeah, they have. Oh, that. Zunga. Okay, my bad. Thanks. Yep. That's all right. all right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good night.